<sighs> oh, and now we're live. Okay, hello. Okay, well, let's take a collective breath together. <laughs> hey, yes. hello. Oh, darn. Oh, okay. I mean, honestly, I feel like we just need to, oh, let's just take a breath and show up. Yeah. Hello, hello, Monday. What the heck, Amoli? I like seriously, like it's one of those Mondays that you say, "Oh my God, I have four more days in this week." <laughs> um. Yeah, I'm like, you know, as I was letting every third through sixth grade student out of their car this morning, I was saying, "Happy Monday, <laughs> Happy Monday!" You know, all excited that it's Monday. This yeah. is the first Monday of the school oh. year. Of course. And, but I have to tell you, and, oh, and the cutest one, it was um, the, this, I don't know, maybe he's first or second grade. And he was like, eh, and mom was like, say happy Monday. And I said, he just doesn't have a clue. Mondays are just like every other day to him right now. Pretty soon he'll catch on Mondays and Fridays, the biggest days of our weeks. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. No kidding. No kidding. But Hello, yeah. friends. As you come in, would you please let us know you're here so we can welcome you and say hello. Thank you for joining us. We are back. Uh, the summer was a little sporadic for many, many reasons. We'll just say because of summer, but I feel like, um, well, I, 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 I won't speak for you, Crystal, but I think when we have a regular schedule, like a school schedule, it feels easier to be consistent yes. for showing up on Mondays. So welcome to fall. Welcome back to school. We will be here on Mondays at 6 p.m. And um, my name is Shara. I am a youth empowerment coach and the uh, founder and director of Me Powerment Programs. I'm a mom to two young adults. My daughter is 22 and is an RN working in Portland. And my son is 25 and he is a second year student up at the University of Alaska in Juneau. And had confronted a bear on the trail the other night. Okay, we need to invite him in. I want to know this. <laughs> you know how much I love bears. Yeah. Oh my God. Well, he has seen a lot of bear. He has seen a lot of bear. We even saw a bear in Juneau when we were there this time. Never saw a bear in Yellowstone, for God's sakes. You know, that's, <laughs> but saw one in Juneau unexpectedly while we were eating. Um, but yeah, he was walking back from the upper housing to his housing that's on campus. And the trail is lit, but he heard rustling around and stopped and sure enough there was a bear and the him and the black bear made eye contact and i don't know if i'm retelling this right so if i am not i he will hopefully correct me not that he's gonna watch but the bear did stand on its hind legs and so tyler made noise and got rah, big and all of this and the bear went down and turned around and walked away so he didn't have to use his bear spray or anything but tyler was like there's kind of a respect issue mom like that's the bear's place. And I was walking the trail home and I have to respect him. And I, yeah, and I'm like, respect him. Spray the hell out of him and run, son. <laughs> I, I love mean, Tyler. Oh, I Tylo. I love it. Like, I love it. I, yeah. I can see respecting the bear, although I'm sure I cross all kinds of boundaries. We find oh. that one in our neighborhood and I'm out looking for it, like totally yeah. inappropriate. Yeah. Um, thank goodness I've never come across one with my dogs. But um, Oh yeah, no kidding. Wow, Tyler, that's so cool. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, well, introduce I, you. <laughs> I am Crystal. I am a um, student intervention coordinator for the Edmond School District. I am uh, just recently a certified life coach. Not sure where I'm going with that, but I would love to be a family life coach. Um, leaning heavy on with the youth, of course, but it's just more of a looking for an understanding on both sides, help both sides out. Um, I have two beautiful children, uh, Eric, who is 23, Shayna, who is 24, and I'm going to add my Katie, who is Eric's lovely girlfriend, uh, who is 21. So, I feel very blessed with that package and um, yeah, just 
That is me in a little tiny nutshell. Yeah. Big, big nutshell. In fact, I, I will, I have to break on you a minute. Okay. You don't even know anything about this, but oh, so I, was, I was on a call today talking to someone who is looking at becoming a life coach. Okay. Through Seattle life coach training. She is, um, just got her master's in elementary education. And so okay. she is moving into a teaching, looking at, you know, getting a job as a teacher, but, um, she was talking and then she was learning about a little bit about what I do. And it's just part of the, you know, we're just building rapport and learning about this. And I shared about you actually. Aww. And I just shared with you that you, your job and what you do in your school and how, you know, your goal with coaching, you're able to apply what you learn because yeah. yes, you're working with the kids, but you also have involvement with the families. A yes. lot of what you do does involve communication with families. And so I shared how you've been able to, hi, Richard. Yay. I was going to say hi, but I was soaking yeah. up the compliment. So and here we are talking about um, Seattle Life Coach Training. And so anyways, I was talking about how you've been able, you know, like there's like fun stuff you want to do with this too outside, yeah. but how you're able to marry and bring that coaching work into your work. It's so true and so perfect way that you said it because yes, I my hope and goal someday is truly to be able to focus on life coaching in some way. Um, I'm very appreciative of Seattle life coach training that I got and my certification, but really for the time that I'm in school, mm -hmm. it helps me with the students, the staff, the communication with families, which, yeah. you know, I believe has always been a strength of mine, but it just kind of helps. It just makes me feel like I can go another step further when I need to, or if I need to, or I feel a little more confident in it. I did, I did build my confidence being yeah. a part of that program. Um, yeah, yeah. It, it's a gift. It's a gift. It I was hoping, you know, Oh, thank you, Richard. You know what I was really hoping you were going to say when you said I didn't know about it and you yeah. were talking about CL Life Coach Training? I was hoping that you were going to say that somebody signed up because they are called, not necessarily signed up, I don't want to take all the credit, but because they yeah. saw my review. Because I really took that seriously. Oh. Like, it was a very special review. So oh, thank you. Yeah. If either you or Richard find that out, you make sure to tell me. Because, you know, oh, I will always trying to give compliments to places that people sometimes don't take the time to do. You know, we're, this is a little bit of advice, maybe suggestion or hope that people will take on. But if we could all try to find somebody to compliment in the day or a business, a, a from coffee in the morning yeah. to a telemarketer or Comcast or whatever at night, like if somebody would just go the extra step to say, Hey, thank you for your kindness and your customer service. If we all did that, it would be so great. I, I I'm only speaking my truth, but I know that it's really easy to complain and be upset about things. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't seem to be a thought to compliment and so true acknowledgement yep. for sure. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. It, and it's, you know, what, what does Dr. Jody say? When we are acknowledged, we will rise. It's true. It's and, so true. And it's, I mean, it's that simple when we are yeah. not acknowledged, we will rise. And you know, and I also love it's twofold, right? Like you have no idea when you acknowledge someone, the gift you give them. Yeah. You also receive in that That's moment. Mm -hmm. Like I am, I mean, life has been hard, like no joke. This since I turned 50, let's get real. It wasn't, I can't, it, that I'm, I'm going back, man. I'm, there is a redo somewhere in my life, but you know, I'll be honest. I would, when I'm doing good and doing for others, it lifts me. It does. It, it can make all the difference in the world. So yes, yes, yes. Yeah, serious, you know, serious, bad, stressful day if I'm having just a horrible day and something happens or somebody's really kind to me and I actually pause to tell them, thank you. All of a sudden my day's better. Yeah. Hands down every time. Like I can't say a time that that didn't work for me. Exactly. And so yeah, if anybody's listening that 
needs a little boost, like just go find somebody to compliment. I agree. So. Yeah. Okay. So back to school, my friend. Wow. So yeah. Do you want to share? I mean, I know, but do you kind of want to share what it looks like right now being that you're back on campus, but there yeah. is also an online option for the students in your school district? There are, and it is, it is way different than it was before. Right. And, um, it, and it's interesting because I think we will have different lenses looking in today or hearing this or rewatching it. I'm finding that districts are really different as oh. much as we're all going through the same thing. Districts yeah. are different because I just found out today. So given I'll tell you where we are and then I'll explain a district that is different. Um, so we are taking all the safety measures we could absolutely possibly take. And, and I feel so thankful for that. We have an online option for students that aren't comfortable or ready or able, you know, there's uh, multiple reasons why somebody would choose online right now. And I respect that and understand that. The difference of our online from this year to last year is it isn't our school. Our school is just oh. focusing on the in-person. The mm -hmm. district has created this online um, access for, for our students. And I'm thankful that our students have that option, but I do miss them. I, I'm not going to lie. It's wow. different. And that's a part of this hard. And hopefully we will all be back to um, somewhat where well, we can all be back together again. Um, so yeah. our, in, yeah, it's, it's different. So our in-person is we are the biggest changes and the biggest difference is that we are, um, eating in our classrooms instead of in a lunchroom with a bunch of people. And, um, we are, our recesses are, so we stay in our co cohort, so we don't intermingle um we you know we walk one way down the hallway and walk the you know like we we don't intermingle in the hallway together we're very careful about that and you know all of these things if somebody's hearing it dog if somebody's hearing it and it's sounding like really horrible it it doesn't feel horrible i don't feel like it's you know the kids are fine stop it the kids are doing, they, I mean, they're way better at it than we are, like wearing our masks. Um, I mean, I shouldn't say better than we are because we're obviously wearing ours too. That's the other thing. We're back to wearing a mask inside and outside. Yeah. Um, we always wore it inside, but we had taken it off outside. Um, but we are wearing it inside and out. And the kids are not complaining. The kids are so happy to be back. Um, and then, so... That's, you know, that's, we're just taking all these safety precautions. We have a health room para who screens oh, and checks and is available to talk to families if there's any questions or concerns. That's been a real gift. I hope they never take that yes, away. I, um, because, you know, I mean, what a, what a nice gift. And uh, I would like to put a shout out to our families. We've had more than not, if a kid feels even slightly stuffy, they, they call and they check with us. Should we not send them? Should we send them? I mean, we're not. Very nice. Know, yeah. Before all of this, I think there's a lot of pressure. I don't mean any disrespect to any adult because I'm sure I did this myself. But, um, you know, where you have to go to work and right. your kid is fine. You give them Tylenol, you send them to school. Oh, there, amen. <laughs> yeah, there is no more of that. Yeah. Um, people are being very careful and very respectful and parents calling and they're like, I don't know, is, you know, they have allergies, but is it okay? Should I send them? You know, they're just, it's, we're all working as a team. That's a really great way to say it. So far, yeah. it feels like a team. Um, but I just found out today a neighboring district, they're not staying separate on the playground. And I think, oh. yeah. And so 
that would be the biggest difference that I know between them and ours. I didn't ask for a bunch of details. You know, I'm not yeah. here to pick apart anything, but I think that that is, that's the one that would be really wonderful if that could go away. However, I understand why we're staying separate. You know, yeah. like if we were to have somebody, thank goodness, I knock on wood or whatever, um, we don't, I'm, we're doing good right now. But, you know, if we were to have uh, somebody get sick, we um, can tell where they are, right? It's my Naomi and she's married lady now. She what? She's married lady now. Oh. She launched, launched like a whole new business. Hi, Naomi. Okay. <laughs> so, okay. So the, I love this actually, Crystal, though. I love hearing this. And if any parents are on here that have kids in school, we'd love to hear from you what you are hearing. Yeah. You know, like, what are you, what are your kids reflecting back to you in this new school year with these changes? Because um, what I'm hearing from the youth I'm working with, they could give two you know what's about wearing a mask. Yeah. They just want to be back with their yeah. friends. They want to be back in the classroom. I mean, that's really all they care about. And so I'm really happy for those that have that choice. And I'm super grateful that, I mean, it's, I can't imagine how, I, I guess I can't imagine how hard it is to be, choose to keep what you feel is keeping your kids safe, right? Yeah. Because that's our job as parents and choosing to keep them online, but then having to be moved from the, in the, the connections that right. you had to do something different. And so I really hope that there's a strong community there yes. for those families and and that there there's that at least that connection for those families too i hope so too and i haven't heard yet one way or another and i mean i know the ones that i really personally know i know that they still have my support and, yeah. and i mean i don't know anything about that online school like i can't answer any questions about that but by golly if one of our kids needed something i would still reach out to find yeah. out what I needed to help them. Yeah. Um, yeah. And you're right. This is a really, uh, it's a big decision to make, to decide what is safest for our children. Oh yeah. Laura, my kids are just happy to see friends and back playing volleyball. Yeah. Absolutely. So, and here's another difference. Uh, and I definitely wanted to talk about this. My niece, uh, my great niece started kindergarten today. So darn cute. I cannot wait to like reach out and find out about it. But I noticed she was able to go into her daughter's class. Oh. And no parents are allowed to come into our school. No. Like, we're just trying to keep any extra germs outside. No. Now that sounds horrible. And I would, as a parent, I probably would have been like, what? Yeah, you would have. Yes, I would. Um, I actually cried with a mom on the first day because we she couldn't go in. And she's like, Crystal, you know me. You know, like when I had my last student here, like they're telling me I can't go in. Like, give me a badge. Like, I'll do anything. I'm like, I know, I'm sorry. And then, you know, then I cried because she yeah. was crying. I'm like, I get it. Yeah. Thank God my kids are not in school. I know. Um, yeah. So, so okay, so tell. I guess then my next question, which you're not going to be surprised by this, and I know you can only really speak from your experience and kind yeah. of the energy you feel. So I don't, but how do you feel like the teachers and the support staff are doing? Because they're, they're the ones holding our babies. Yes. They're the one holding our kids and they need as much love and support through this transition as we are giving our kids in this yes. and grace. They probably need more. So that's a fantastic question, Shara. And when I think about, when I think about what all goes into that, like the support for them and, and I hope that many other people are thinking about how are our teachers doing, how, are our support staff doing? Because as we've heard lots from um, Dr. Jody, who we love, if our teachers aren't 
okay. Our kids are okay. And just in general, I shouldn't even say our teachers. If our baby, if our adults aren't okay, right, our babies aren't okay because yeah. it's the parents too, right? Right. Oh yeah. For example, like if I, when my kids would be in school and I would wake up late and I was stressed and I was cranky and we'd go back and forth and get your shoes. Where are they? Why can't we find them? Like, ah! or right before softball and baseball practice, freaking out, can't find the socks. Inevitable. The kids had a rough game or crying or, you know what I mean? And who wants to start their day like that? Yeah. So I'm a prime example of what I'm trying to say. Like if we're not okay, our babies aren't okay. And if our babies are coming to school, not okay. That's rough. That's like, it's like rough. So our teachers do need support. Our support staff does need support. Um, uh, our <coughs> principal, Stephanie is like amazing at encouraging and trying to lift up and just remembering our teachers. I, yeah. I mean, I feel it. I don't know how they feel it. Cause honestly, like I didn't talk to anybody to check on anybody today. Cause I was busy from the minute I walked in until the minute I walked out. And um, I worked with a couple teachers, but we all were kind of just doing our job. And now I reflect on your question and I'm like, I really didn't take care of anybody, right? But 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 you're one of those people that I'm asking how we're doing. You yeah. are support staff in there. For sure, for sure, 100%. Right? And it's kind of cute. There was a teacher that uh, made a comment today, like she was concerned about me. Well, I made a comment, I was concerned about her. So with that, I will mm -hmm. say, we are trying to take care of each other. Good. And I would say the vibe within is the kids are so happy to be there. Like literally I've had no complaints. Yeah. Um, uh, just like in summer school, none of the kids complained to have to come to summer school. Isn't that interesting? Sorry, I'm, I'm got a little. It thing. is interesting. Okay. And I commented on it quite a bit. Cause I was like, how come the kids are not complaining to come to school in the summer? Right? Like that's really kind of an oxymoron. They want to be with their people. Exactly. Um, but the teachers I believe are so happy is dad coming down i hear stairs someone coming down the stairs yeah. so we could get a guest yeah that's okay. that's okay the um the teachers are really happy to be with their their students just like the students yeah. are really happy to be with them now is there some underlining concern i'm sure there is nobody is really sharing that yeah. and um but they're human that's a thing we just need to remember we are all human Amen. Right. Yeah. 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 I, I, it's just going to be, it's just going to be a year of. Yeah. Do what you can so, be there for each other. We're going to have to, we're going to have to be watching out for each other. Really. I agree with that. And then, you know, Laura, I know you're on here and any other of our parents or caregivers or even educators share with us how you're doing. Like, our parents, how are we doing? I know when I saw a lot of pictures online, you know, the first day pictures. Okay. I, there were, are some really happy parents. Yes. There are some really happy parents to have their kids back in school. Cause right. Like when our kids are happy, we're happy. I get yeah. that. But there's a lot also, I think that's bruise underneath all of that. Right. That just naturally sh we feel as parents and, and, you know, and, and I want to say, and I think this might be crystal, what you and I were talking about. And we were like, yes, we want to talk about that. Like, but I don't know, but you know, we're here. We are, we're talking about how our kids, like they're so happy. They don't care about the mask They're Cause everybody's wearing it first of all, but they get to be back at school with their friends. And, you know, we're hearing how resilient our kids are, how brave our kids are, like we're, and they are without a doubt. Yes. But there is a whole lot of other emotion in there as well that we are. <laughs> <laughs> okay. There is that side. The that parents were like, get them out of here. Yeah. There is that part. I love that, Laura. Thank you for your honesty. I get it. Yeah. I get it for yeah. sure. Um, but you know, there's a lot of other emotion. And I think, 
you know, based on just some of the, the parents I've been talking with and the kids I've been working with, that we have to, there has to be an opportunity somehow to also validate that. Yeah. Um, I had one kiddo tell me, I'm so tired of being told how brave I am. Fair. I totally get him. And there's a, okay, tell me more. Mm -hmm. And she, she's just over it. It's, it's, she's heard it so many times. It's like, I, she can't be anything else. Nobody sees anything but brave. Yeah. But she's got something brewing. Right. Right. So, and so I don't think we should quit telling our kids this. Don't get me wrong, but I think we right. just need to also create a space and conversations to also hear what else they're feeling, not just what we're seeing. Right. And what we know, because there is a lot still happening in school in their minds and their hearts and in their space that they're navigating right now. Yeah. I think opening up the, the conversation is key. Like really having conversation yeah. with our kids and, you know, well, when she says, I'm tired of people saying I'm brave, I love that you're like, tell me more. So yeah. if we were to be able to coach the parents and the other staff that works with these kids to just say that alone. Yeah. Yeah. What makes you say that? Yeah. Who all are you hearing that from? Yeah. What do you think you would like to hear different? You know, like. Right. Yeah. What? Yeah. Things. Yeah. That's just great. You know, and I, I've been thinking and oh, I'm just going to throw myself out there right now, but you know, I would like on my social media, I keep thinking I'm going to, I want to start putting out more conversation starters Yeah, for parents to have with their kids, because how many of us ask the same question when their kids get home every day and we are getting the same answers. Right. And we just, it's just becomes routine. I mean, I'm so guilty of that. I'm so guilty of that. And so, so wouldn't it be nice to have some little fresh conversation starters, a different way to say, how was your day? I have a different way that I've really been loving. Okay, sure. So I've been asking kids what their favorite part of their day is. Yes. And, um, some really cute thing. One, I finally got one that said on like the second day of school, I'm like, what was your favorite part of the day yesterday? When I, when they were dropping her off in the morning, cause I didn't see her at the end. And she said, I made a new friend. I was like, oh. that is so like beautiful. I love that. Yep. A funny today, kindergarten. Now, what do you think you hear the most when you ask, what is your favorite part of the day? What do you think they would say? Recess. Recess. Or lunch. Yep. Um, um, so I like that. One, one thing that surprised you. So today I asked a Whoa. kindergartner, what was the favorite part of your day? <laughs> and she said, no joke. I had to ask her what grade she was because I couldn't believe it. She said, well, I can definitely tell you it wasn't recess. <laughs> I was like, Wait, what grade are you? And um, yeah. That was uh, funny. And then one person was like, I don't know. And I said, well, what was the part you liked the least about today? I don't know. And this is a fifth grader. And I said, when did you turn into the I don't know kid? Like, when did that happen? Over the summer? Um, first day of school? Like, this is not who I remember. And she goes, I don't know. And I'm like, there you go. There it is again. She was yep. cracking up by that time, at which I was so thankful because I was like, yep. am I going to break her? What's going to happen? Um, but they do get so used to the same question that it's. And nobody know. questions the okays, good. I don't know. We just move on, right? Yeah, because we're busy. So, yeah, we're busy. Yeah. Absolutely. So, I'm stealing this one. Tell me one thing you saw today that surprised you. I'm totally stealing it. Oh, I love that stuff. Yeah. 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 That's good. And if anybody else, even if you're catching the replay or you're on here, I would love creative questions.
that will expand on how was your day so that we can start learning a little bit more from our kids and giving them an opportunity opportunity to share differently or yeah. maybe share period. So, yeah. So Tanya, I would really like to yeah. ask like, what is a different way to ask kids how they are? And where that question comes from is mm -hmm. today there was two students, sixth grade, two different times, two different areas sitting all by themselves. And they're kids I know very well, okay? And I'm like, what's up? Are, how's it going? Oh, fine. Well, you're here all by yourself. Like, you know, is everything okay? And they're like, yeah. Well, you know, I mean, like, they don't really want to share. I don't really want to make it bigger than what it is. Right. But, and I did say that, Tanya. I'm like, well, is there anything I can do for you? Mm -hmm. And both of them were like, no. I'm like, so you just want to be here just kind of chilling time by yourself? And they're like, yep. And then, of course, I always have to make it worse or, you know, add my little two cents and be like, so what you're really saying is, Miss Litz, it's enough. Like, you can move on now. And they're like, yes. <laughs> what grade? Sixth grade. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I, I, if I were to speculate, I mean, they've just kind of grown out of the playground and it really wasn't a big deal, but I really did want to make sure they were okay. And I really did want them to know that, you know, I was there. Um, you know, but. and, and Tanya, I don't know if you were on in the beginning when we were talking with Richard in the chat through the chat, but that question, is there something I can do for you today? I mean, a lot of times the answer is no, but that question alone acknowledges them. It yeah. says, I see you, or I feel your hurt, or whatever it is in that moment. And even if the answer is no, there is something really powerful that happens just in that acknowledgement and that offer and giving them this, the space to say, no, or yes, I could use this or whatever that is. So I, I, I really, there's a lot of power in that question. Well, and that just brings me to, sorry, my dog's going to play with a toy, but there was a student during summer school who was very, she stood out in a really great way. She had some really, she's a sixth grader. She's now in middle school. She had some really great makeup, like, not like the makeup, you know, 70s makeup that I grew up with, like some serious artwork going on up yeah. here. And she had a really awesome haircut. Like it was just, it's just cool. She looked like a rocker. You know what I mean? Like she was very, she was adorable. And um, she noticed my shirt. I had one of those shirts that was like, you know, be kind to everybody or something like that. Mm -hmm. And so she, you know, came over, she acknowledged my shirt. Well, I noticed like at lunchtime, whatever, she's just kind of by herself and I went and talked to her and it was this kind of a thing. I was like, you know, you know, how is it going here? Cause she wasn't from our school. Summer oh. school was all these other schools. And, and she's like, it's okay. You know I mean? It's just, she was really, I have to say, um, there, she was, she stood out to be a little different than the kids that hung around her, like a little more right. older, you know, there was just yeah. something there. It's and she's like, part. yeah, she's just kind of like, eh, it's okay. We'll end up talking to her. She is a musician. She oh. is, has a band, if, if you will. And I'm like, oh, I'd love to find you on YouTube. Well, she's not allowed to be on YouTube. So there's nothing on YouTube, which, and I told her, I'm so thankful for that. I mean, I'm yeah. so, I'm so glad that your parents are doing that. Anyway, so we had this conversation and we talked to her a couple days and I, I just told her if there's ever anything I can do for you, you know, please let me know. And, and she told me she was going to be at the middle school. And I'm like, I'm always over here by golly. The first day of school, she was sitting right outside our front door. And I don't know, I think she was probably waiting for a friend or something, but she said right away to me, Hey, do you remember me? Oh, I could recognize her makeup and all of that. You know what I mean? Cause she stood out and I'm like, I absolutely do. And so I know that just that conversation of if there's anything ever I can do for you, I'm over here. That really meant something to her. Like I truly saw her. Um, 
yeah, she was, she's pretty amazing, but I, I love that. It's so important. It's so yeah. important to really, we don't always know. And I know we miss some, but it's so important to really take that minute to make sure that these kids, these adults know that we see them. Yep. When you are acknowledged, you will rise. Yeah. Yep. Very true. Yeah. So thank you for that, Tanya. And it, yeah. I just, I, it's just so, I, I just am not alone in this. There's so many no. people doing this and, and, and we get busy and we don't realize the yeah. gift we give when we just give a minute of our time. And so yeah. I just, I just hope that people really see that in themselves, like the gift that they give just by giving a minute of their time, right. you know? Um, but I want to tell a cute story because so we were talking about kids and adults and everybody, you know, coming back to school. I love this time. Like people are so the ones that are like, get out of my car. The funny yeah. one. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, they're funny. Well, so our routine at school is we have painted horseshoes where the kids stand and wait for their adults or wait for their teachers to go in school. It's a way to keep them distanced from each other. And, you know, oh, okay. And also kind of be able to manage where all these kids are because we've changed some in the back of the school, some in the front, whatever. Well, I come out of school after school on the first day of school. And the, it says in our PowerPoint that the kids will be on the horseshoe. When if you're walking, you can go to your kid's horseshoe. I wanted to take a picture. I come out. All of the horseshoes were taken by the grownups. The parents we're standing on a horseshoe <laughs> waiting for their children because they were so excited to get their kids. It was like, you guys are so funny. I'm like, how'd you do today? You follow the rules. Yeah, yeah. Except for it wasn't for them. It's for their kids. No. Nobody, the next day, nobody was standing on the horseshoe. They were like, okay. I probably embarrassed them. I'm like, how'd everybody do today? Did you do that? That's so funny. Because there's that side of it too. Like all funny aside. Yeah. Parents are having a hard time dropping their kids off too because they've had them 24 hours a day for two years. Oh, yeah. And we're in all the hard and all of it. It's still yeah. a transition for them. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hi, Steph. Hi, Stephanie. Are you glad she's here? How's Melody? How's school this year? Fill us in. <laughs> Donya, <laughs> you're not having a hard time. But, but is what, what is L London? She eighth grade? Oh my gosh. Seventh grade. Wait, eighth no, grade. No, she's seventh. Oh, she's seventh. Okay. I could be wrong, but I think she's seventh. Seventh. Oh, seventh. Good, I'm right. okay. 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 I was thinking eighth grade. Wow. Yeah. Well, she looks like last time I saw her, she looked like, I couldn't believe how much grown up she'd gotten. Yeah. Yeah. What everything. happened over that summer? She oh, got yeah. extra, makeup and nails. Yes, exactly. She exactly. must have had some extra salmon and green beans or something because she all of a sudden was so grown up and like mature yeah. and makeup and nails and what happened? Yeah. No <laughs> kidding. Oh, wow. Yeah. Stephanie, I imagine you have had a hard time dropping Mel off because you've been able to work from home while you had Mel at home. And even in all the hard and the balancing and the juggling, you were still doing it 24 seven. And now you're dropping her off. <laughs> oh, best oh, ever. Oh. So, so you know what, Steph? I think that's, you're doing it right. Yeah. You're doing it right. Like, she wants to spread her wings. She wants to have friends. She wants to be with her other people. Like, I think that's great. You're probably making her cry. I'm on your side, Stephanie. Hold her back. Don't make her go. <laughs> no. I don't know. Well, I'm they do joking. grow. Yeah, they grow up so fast, right? I mean, like, look at London. Seventh grade. Wow. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, and I'm totally joking, Stephanie, but I feel you anyways. Mm -hmm. I, there was a kid getting out of his car today. I think he's third grade today, but you, no crying in baseball. You know, there's, um, oh, see, you did make her cry, you big meanie. 
<laughs> I cried today at school to do today also, Stephanie. I understand. Um, uh, I So I got this boy out. I opened the door because I have the best job. Like I get to greet all of these kids in the morning and I get yeah. to open their car door and I get to say good morning. Although one today, the daughter was like, don't slam the door. My dad gets really mad if I slam the door. I'm like, did I slam the door? She goes, I don't know. And I'm like, I'll do better. And she goes, okay. Anyways, I get to open these doors and I get to say good morning to all of these kids. And one of them didn't have his mask on quite yet. I'm not worried. Like he's in his car. Right. And I open the door. And I'm like, whoa, what happened to you? Like you all of a sudden look grown up. Did you eat oh. extra Wheaties last night? Like, what happened? And mom's like, I know. And I'm like, well, it has been two years since I've really seen some of these kids' faces. Yeah. Oh, he looks like a different kid. Oh, because yeah, because now you see him only with a mask on. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. They're growing up. Yep. They are all growing up. So. Yes. So I, I really don't have anything else to share. I just really wanted to check in and say we're back, we're here. Um, and then of course the conversation that we just shared in around, you know, our kids and yeah. our educators and our parents and let's keep checking in with each other and let's keep the conversations alive and flowing and um, acknowledge, acknowledge, acknowledge. I do, I agree. I don't have a lot more to share either, but I do want to say in case um, anybody is having any um, anxious thoughts about, um, oh, sorry about your dog barking. <laughs> um, in case anybody has any questions or thoughts mm -hmm. around all this school stuff or your kids, um, uh, remind me to tell you, Crystal. Okay, I will. Um, I want everybody to know if you do not call your school, if you do not ask your teacher, we do not know. And, no. and there is no better advocate for your child than right. you. I personally, my personal truth, I will love every single one of the babies I have that comes before me and needs anything. If, you know, if I can see it, I will take care of it. But I am not, I'm one person. If you have any questions, any concerns, any compliments you want to give, do it. Yep. Call your school, email your teacher, um, send notes with your children don't hold back anything. No. And I'm not saying go to, you know, you have a problem and you go to the top. Start with the person that you're concerned with. Yes. Give us all some grace as we get, as I promise you, we are giving parents grace too, because this is hard and new in a lot of ways for everybody. Mm -hmm. But the one thing that cannot get shoved aside or set aside is the the information that needs to be shared. Yep. You're there's nothing more important than your babies. There's nothing more important than you know you in this situation. Okay. If just please always call and ask and question. Um and if you need a post-it note, I have extra. You can write a post-it note that says you are always your child's best advocate. Oh, don't, let, yeah. don't let anything be left unsaid. But with that, I just want to make sure people hear that. Yeah, I think that's a really powerful, powerful message to leave with. I, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, if you're not advocating for your kid who is, right? Mm -hmm. And and I know from the not that because I'm a teacher, but like as a teacher or someone who also works with youth, like we, what we don't know, we don't know. Right. And so if you could even just be the messenger some days to help us supporting your kids through the rough patches, please, please share those, reach out, find out who is in that village, yeah. find that person within your school, that teacher, that para, that support advocate, someone that can help you navigate 
these waters with your kiddo. And if you're not finding it in the first call, you make another. That's right. You do not. There For no reason do you set your child's needs aside. Nope. And um, also, I had another thought that I want to make sure. Oh, for you kindergarten moms and dads um, or any student, because by the way, this year, every student is like a kindergartner because they have been away from school, right? Yeah. And there might be some separation anxiety. I will tell you from my own personal experience, since I was the crier and my kids wanted me to leave at kindergarten, that's my truth. <laughs> Please, when you see a trusted adult at the school, leave as fast as you can. The longer you linger around trying to make wow. your child feel better, the harder it is for you mm -hmm. and your child. 99% of the times, within five minutes of parent leaving, child is totally fine and actually is like having a great time. Yeah. There is going to be that other percent. And I can guarantee you at my school, if they're, if they're not, you know, if it's just not happy there, you know, we can't make it happy or we can't make it better. We're going to bring the parent in. We're going to call the parent. We're not going to, I, and I can probably, I feel confident in most schools. Like, we're, nobody's here to yeah. torture your babies, but the sooner we walk away, the easier it is. Yep. Um, and it is the hardest thing. I did have a parent that was like, I called her and she was in her car crying. Like, in, with all due respect, I thanked her for being her child's very best support and walking away is the hardest for her, but her child was fine. Yep. And, and you and think sometimes it's harder for us mamas and dads and caregivers than it is for those kids. It is. Yeah. She's like, thank you so much for the call. I called my boyfriend and I said, I just need a coffee. I said, okay, plan for your coffee on Monday because yeah. Monday's going to be hard too. Yeah. Because <laughs> this was Friday. Yeah. You get to have your coffee. So that's just my two pieces of advice for this school year. Do not hold back. Do not let things build up because then it erupts and it's never good for you, the student or the teacher right? or the administration. I mean, I don't know what the deal is, but if you have a problem, advocate for your child, ask for your needs, and we will do the best we can to help and support. And um, and if your child is having, having separation issues, just love them and yeah. leave them. And we promise to take care of them. Yay. All right, so we will end, but we will see you back next week, Monday at six. We will be live. I'm not sure yet what it's going to look like conversation, but that's kind of the fun part. We're just kind of like feeling out our weeks and yep. and then what what's up for all of us and what's going on. So thank you. Thank you all of you for being here with us and anybody that's catching the replay, hashtag replay, and please join the conversation. Yeah, Have please a do. great evening and a blessed week. Love to you all. Thank yeah, you. Thank friends. you.